Dave here, how are you? Today is the 12th of April, 2020. I uh, hope your week has been well, even if you've been in lockdown, if you've been able to get into the shed or get out into the garden, whatever it is, and make use of this time where we're supposed to be staying home. I know that I've got a lot of jobs that I'm slowly ticking the boxes on, and one of them is this dressing table behind me. Now, this has been going on for about five years, I think. This is my mother's dressing table and it met with an accident when I was bringing it back from the family home after it had been sold. Uh, it fell off the back of my trailer on the M4 at about 120 kilometers an hour and skidded down the road and the top was absolutely stuffed. Now the front, it landed on the edge, the table tipped over on its face, the whole front of the edge got grazed off. Well, I've rebuilt it and this is the front, this is the top now. I've got a nice satin finish on it and the title image was actually this corner. So how nice is that? That's beautiful. We did a lot of work on this on the live shows maybe a year, two years ago. Anyway, I've been encouraged by a few people to get back into it and finish it off. And one of those things that I want to get done because it's been sitting in a hallway and blocking walking through. So. It's got a mate up in the house, it's a tall wardrobe, and I'm gonna finish this and put it up beside it. Now, part of the damage was the drawbacks and the mirror support. Now, this section here came up and was a bit ornate, and then there was a piece of timber up here that held the mirror. You can see here, I've got the dowel, and there's another one there that snapped out. Now, this was built by my great-grandfather. This is Arthur. Now, so there's the relationship my mother's grandfather so he built this for his granddaughter and it's a beautiful piece it's an australian piece and i'm going to show you around it a little bit as well and the joinery on it puts a lot of people to shame me in particular all right what have we got on the show we're going to do the um we're going to domino part of the new one that i've made i actually i was working on it and i stuffed it up <laughs> i put i put a piece of timber on the wrong way around. So I've written back. Well, it's easier if you see it that way. So now I know where I'm at. It's always good to label things. We're going to plane this to get it right. Uh, we'll walk around the dressing table. We're going to also possibly, if we get time, uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I may not even be able to do it because I can't find it. <laughs> It'll be here somewhere. I'm going to look at sanding up on the machine here, I'm madly looking for it. It'll turn up during the show, I hope. <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna look at sanding the edge, the, the, sorry, the joint fence that I made for this plane here. I've got it, I've shaped it up a little bit. It's one of those jobs in progress. You can see me looking around <laughs> the workshop wondering where the hell, I found it. That was lucky. So I can show you, I've shaped it up a little bit and you can see where the rare earth magnets are gonna go in the back there. So we're gonna play around with the disc sander and see if we can get that looking nice. Um, all right, first thing we'll do is we shall have a look around this dressing table. It really is nice. Check for time, we're going well, four minutes. I'll take the top off and put it to the side and we'll get the other camera working because I've got a camera set up down there and it's camera three there we go so this is the table I'll come around this side so I can do a little bit more presenting the joinery here is fantastic I've got dovetails here I don't know if you can see them I'll turn it around a little bit and we've got mortise and tenons there's a double tenon coming through here supporting this section here um, on the back, it's just one large, big mortise and tenon joint into the leg. And I'll, I better get the camera and bring it around so you can see. So there's the double dovetail, double mortise and tenon joint. And at the, at the back, you can see just full on mortise and tenons go all the way down inside the leg. And something that some people might find interesting as well is pocket holes. I'll pull the drawer back a little bit. So that is a pocket hole 
that's been created. You can see right in the center there, that's where the brace and bit has gone in that direction. And then they've cleaned it out a little bit going this direction, put the brace and bit in there, clean that out with a chisel possibly, and then a hole right at the top. And they just used all of these screws. Now I've kept all the screws. They're all the genuines. I'm hoping that's focusing okay. Could be, I'll bring it back just a little bit. There's a finial that's been snapped. So I've got one that's still in good condition. What do you think about these drawers? Pardon, uh, mucking around here with this camera. All dovetailed. Now these drawers were all a mess. The whole thing was a mess until I got a hold of it and I hit it up with this, just put the camera back. I got a hold of it and I used a, a polish restorer. So it's basically an alcohol, I think, to, or a methylated spirits of some sort that cleans it at the same time it applied another wax on top. So it's pretty handy stuff. But cleaned it up well. All right, so that, that's, the, that's the unit. I'm gonna put it together a little bit, so I'll bring the camera back to about there, and you can see as it goes together. Now, this is the top, and I've put Liberon finishing oil on it, and it's a satin. Even though sometimes you'll see this, it'll look a little bit glossy, it just depends on where the lights are on it. So that's the top. On its own, it'll make a really nice desk. But this cedar down here, this, this is just beautiful. It's alive. Now down here, I don't know how you'd get two legs in there. That's, <laughs> that's pretty tight. But look at all this uh, scroll work or ornate carving that he's done, even little bits down here. It's beautiful. Now how it used to work was, there would be also draw boxes on top. And I think this is the right hand one. Everything has been labeled. I'm just getting things in the background here. And th this is the right. So little holes in the top here. These were damaged as well, uh, but protected a fair bit by the tops. Now I'll show you what I mean. This is one of the tops for the draw box. And it looks really nice now, but you might see on the back here, I've put a join there. Now that was part of this front. So I cut off a fair bit across the front here. It used to overhang, this whole top used to overhang at the back to allow for a skirting board or a baseboard for the unit to push up against. And then this would continue past and push up against the wall. Very clever idea. Um, yeah, you're just getting my, a bit of my midriff here at the moment. You're not getting me, we're focusing on this. Now, so what I did was I, this used to be the front, just there. So the off cut from here that I could salvage, I glued onto here and this used to be the back. So it used to sit there like that. Then I turned it around, made that the back. And then I redid this profile with, I think it was two different styles of router cutter to get this, this shape and a lot of sanding, particularly along the edge there. There was a heap of sanding. So that goes up there. And then the drawers, of course, go on the top. And they all fit beautifully. I've got to put some stops on there to stop the drawers going all the way through. You know, people don't put the time in to make this kind of stuff anymore. But how's that looking? Now it used to be, I'll grab this other one. It used to have this here. And I've still got a little bit of cutting to do here. And that, that's where it used to be. Now I don't know why that's, ah, oh, there it is. It's not sitting down properly. There it is. Lovely. And it had this coming up to about here. Let me see if I can, no, you can't see that. I'll tip it up a little and take this back further. 
and up a little higher. Whilst we're in this part, and that direction. There we go. I'll pop down. Yeah, you can see me now. Okay, so this was a mirror support and it had a brass pin in here and then clamps on the side of the mirror. Now the mirror, thank heavens, was inside the car. So were all of these drawers. <laughs> I can't count my blessings on that one. So they, they were safe, but it's the, it's the rest of the cabinet got mangled. All of this work here. Now there's also another little point here, uh, a little part, and it had finials on the tops. And the one that I've already pretty much finished making is going to go over on this side. And to give you an idea, as to, I'll just check on that side that I'm in the right distance. Yeah, about the right distance. We'll come back a little. I'll build it together a little bit more. What have we got? This is the back as well that goes under the mirror. And this, that's tenoned. Goes in there. And then that one comes across. Push it in. Actually, the tenon that I've made on the new one, the replacement one, works better. So I'll move that. We'll put the replacement one in. The one that we're going to work on at the moment. This is the one that I'm working on. And I've created a mortise there on the router table. And that slides in there. There, there, there and there, kind of. And back across to there. It's going to look really smick. And then the finials, as I said, they go on there and on there. So they look pretty nice. I'll bring that in close so you can see it. So the finials there and there. And my little attempt at carving. And as I say, the boxes, the back for the mirror, and the other box I have over there. Oop, over there waiting to go on. And then of course we've got the mirror. Can't do all this and not talk about the mirror. Let's tip that up just a little bit to there. So as I say, thank heavens, the mirror was inside the car. So that's the mirror with the special mounts on the side, the brass mounts. And it will live just here. in the center. So it's a beautiful piece. It really is. You can understand why I am like I am, I guess. If it's in the blood, I'm going to go to the other camera. Back again. So the job today is on this particular one, I've started sanding it here. You might be able to see that. I'm going to sand it here. It's not as nice. So this is just a little thing that we're going to do. I have written back on that one and back on that one. I did have it joined. You can see I put the dominoes in there. I cut it off again because I got it, the profile, the wrong way. So that's what we're going to do. We'll, we'll domino that. And I've got the Excel here. And if you're interested, I've also got the RTS 500 here. This is a little attachment from Seneca that allows me to use all of those from the Domino 500, so the DF 500, with this. You can use all of those on this. And some people might say, well, you know, why? I've got the big fella, why go for a smaller joint? Well. If you're making smaller things like picture frames, you might want to go for, a, for maybe a six millimeter. Rule of thumb with most things is for mortise and tenon, the mortise and tenon joint is the tenon is one third of the width of the timber. So the cheeks, what have you, on the mortise are going to be two thirds of the joint. So it's one third, one third, one third. And 
good system. And a lot of the time I use 18 millimeter material and there's something else, there's a domino pl docking plate or something like that, I think, as well that you can put on that'll adds 10 millimeters to this part. And, you know, it's handy. It lets you do melamine and things like that with this, where I couldn't before. I had made a kind of a, my own little system, but this other one works really well. All right, there's links in the description box below if you want. Go for it. Uh, move this out of the way. First things first, I need to do a little bit of planing on this piece. And to do that, I'm going to use a couple of John's uh, stops and one of these. So these little dogs. And it was, which face was it? It's this face that I need to plane. I'll put that there. I'm going to use the turnout number five because it's just a beautiful plane. <laughs> Don't you love it when you restore old things? I just thought, working on this, I wanted to use a plane that was made in the same era as Arthur had made that. Uh, Rene Turner was, started his business in 1935. Arthur would have still been working, probably towards the end of his career, when these things came on the market in Australia. Australian made, how nice is that? All right, just checking that it's not too... I'm looking here because this computer screen's got a fair bit of white on it. Ideally, I do this outside, but if I can't look at something uh, in the workshop, I, sometimes I just go for one of the lights. Now, how I do this, see how I've got my hand on the back and my finger is going to push it, my little finger will push against the lateral lever, lateral adjustment lever, whilst that gives me room for my thumb to adjust the depth wheel. So it's clockwise to raise it back into the body and counterclockwise to lower it, I think. All right, so I'm going to have a quick look. I'm looking up the plane and thinking, I've gone a little bit too far, back it up. Now the thing is you take it past just a, just a fraction. You take it past, you raise the blade up past what you want it to do, and then you slowly advance it down because you've got that little bit of slop in the mechanism and if you're pushing it back down again, well, then you've got the pressure on the blade holding it down. If you leave it all the way up, if you go down and then bracket back up to where you think it is, and then don't push it back in again, the blade can slowly creep back up while you're cutting, and it's, it's a pain. So this is the easiest way that I've found. So I'm just pushing it back ever so slowly. I'm looking straight down the plane, and I'm going to bring my hand back up the plane, not down the plane. I'm getting rid of any dust that might be there. That's looking pretty close. All right, proof's in the pudding. Let's see how it works. I think that works all right. <laughs> There's a little bit more just, just there. I might even do it the other direction. This grain, the grain in the cedar here is is really close to being one way or the other. You have to actually put a blade over it to see how it re responds to you. If you're getting a little bit of tear out, it could be that you have to go the other direction. Let's see. You know, I think I'm going to have to... That's pretty good. I'll give it a... another pass. Yeah. Today. I may even have to give that a little bit of a sand as well. Give me a second. I'll see if I've got my scrapers here. With the card scrapers, I can lift it a little bit higher and I might be able to get a better result. Coming up nicely. It's almost better than sanding. Some people say a blade are better. Is a blade a blade are better? 
Some people say that the result from a blade is better than sanding. Well, that's true to a certain point. Now, before I put dominoes into this, I'm going to do a little bit of sanding in here. I've done all of this part here because I wanted to get all that done prior to putting that on because it's a pain to sand down onto an internal corner. Uh, now, if I put that there on my bench, that's going to give me a nice area there to sand. I'll spin this around so you can see what I'm up to. Switch cameras again. So I'm hoping everyone has had a good week and that you're getting lots of things sorted. That should be okay. You can see the difference to that. I'll put the bench clamp on. Now these things, all I've done is I've taken the mushroom or the dome head uh, 5 16th bolt out of there and replaced it with a 5 16th T-bolt. That's all it is and it fits into my bench very nicely. Got it. Sandpaper. I'm going to use a little bit of 320. This is the color coded stuff so I know where it is. So I've got a kind of sand in here. Put the other specs on for this because this is close up work. I'm using the pad of my thumb as a sanding block. So in the center. I'm not kind of favoring either side. I'm pushing that weight right in the middle. And it's important to use new sharp paper. And as you're going along, one of the other things that's important is, see how it fills up with gunk? Clean it out. getting there. This is my sorry attempt at carving. <laughs> oh dear. Nearly. I'm going to change the position a little bit so I'm not kind of falling over. I'll move that one down to there. There we go. Bring this around. Might be too close for focusing. Mm, about there. That's where we're working. Are you the kind of person that uh, would start sanding and then make your body go into all sorts of contortions to be able to get to somewhere? Like if it was, you know, and bend over and try. <laughs> or would you move the job into position so it's easier for you? Believe me, there's people out there that will just think, oh, well, I've clamped it there. That's where I have to work. Change it. You're in control. I don't normally sand across, but sometimes just to get a bit of a result, it's an idea. Now how I had prepared this earlier was I cut it with a bandsaw and then I used double sided tape, Turner's tape I think it was, to put the original onto this and then I used a pattern follower or a flush trim bit was a spiral up 
in the router table and it worked well. This is one of the reasons why I hadn't done the job. <laughs> I knew this part was coming for me. Oh dear. Look, let's jump to the 400 and we'll go through this reasonably quickly. I might have to come back and do a little bit more sanding. Oh, that's coming up well. What I'm doing now is I'm using my thumbnail. I'm pushing down onto the paper with my thumbnail and it's getting into that part a little bit better. Now, let's have a look at the platen. This is where it really starts to shine. So I've got some thousand here. caught under the mat. See that? That's where, that's why you spend the time. A little bit there I need to clean up with the paper a little bit more. But that's starting to look really, really nice. Okay, that's enough for sanding. I'm not going to make you suffer it. We'll go back to the other camera. There we go. And so we have that. <laughs> oh, wrong camera. There we go. It's, it's coming along really well. Now I've got to put some dominoes in here. Now, there's probably a heap of people who've got domino machines and there's people who don't. So basically all a domino is, is maybe, maybe it's one of these. <laughs> this is from Paul Franklin. Um, he's been locked in the shed. Uh, with the lockdown and he thought, you know what, I've got some Paduke lying around the shed. It's been there for years. I might make, might make some dominoes. So thanks for sending those in, Paul. If you've got things like that, send them in to me and I'll throw them up for people to look at. But what a great idea. Just a drill press and a bandsaw. I'm guessing, put a little mark in, cut the shapes out to start um, and then a drill press and knock the holes in. Maybe a nail punch or, or a center punch to start with and just tap where you're going to drill them and an ordinary drill bit or in a portable drill but I think I think a drill bit uh, in a press start that again I think a drill press is a better idea because you've got control on the depth all right so domino 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 how are we going half an hour half an hour of sanding that's what everyone loves to watch isn't it okay so we've got this has got a lip on it, just here. See that? I don't want to clamp it down onto the table because cedar's not a horribly strong timber. I don't want to snap this by pressure coming down on it. So I'm going to use a piece of plywood as a packer. See that? Now I've got it sitting perfectly and I'm not going to scratch the underside on anything because I've already put a finish on it. So I'm going to I will clamp it. Actually, what I'll do is I'll put a stop there. Just push it back against it for the moment. And yeah, maybe I'll bring it forward a little bit. Yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll bring it forward. One position and another dog there. You can see all that, can't you? And so now I have that sitting there. And it's held beautifully. I'm going to put a couple of marks 
on this one I've got to make sure back is facing up to me which it is now and flush with the bottom you don't really want to see this part oh, may as well <laughs> raise this up and rotate that and down it's probably okay there in the mouse There we go. This is the back. This is the back as well because I've got it written on there. I'm lining it up flush with the end. And I've got a couple of marks from before. And so we'll go straight down into where the other dominoes were. I'm transferring the marks across. So they're marked on there. I'll spin that around like so, out of the way and get the domino over here. And with the domino, it's got depth positions here. So I can set that to wherever I want. Um, I can, these are kind of limiters to say, all right, well, I can't go any further than that way and I can't go any further that way. This is in case I'm using it in a uh, situation where I've got a skinny leg and a large um, rail or, or style the rail would be more likely so i might want to only go in 20 millimeters on one side and 40 millimeters on the other side 40 there so then it's it's a stop it won't let me go any further as i switch between depths at the moment i only want to go in 20 so i'm going to move that back down to there and that to there and i'm on 20 millimeters does that make sense also, what I'm doing is I'm making it a wide cut. If I move this lever, it makes it a nice tight joint. But I, I want to have that little bit of play. So the thickness is still going to be the same, but the machine is going to oscillate a little bit further than it would normally. Ordinary, it does this. And when I'm doing this, it makes it wider by around about five millimeters. Uh, depth on the side here, I'm showing 10 millimeters. Now that's to the center. I'm going to have a look on the side. Also, it's got a little indicator right there that tells me where the middle of the cutter is going to be. Can you see that? Just there? Maybe like that. So that's a little quick check. The 500 is different. It tells you the overall depth of the timber and halves it for you. So this, I think this is a better idea. This tells you where it's actually going to be happening. Get the plug it cable, pop it in, and the dust hose on this side. You can see it going on there. So we have depth, we have plunge. We're at 90 degrees. This is an adjustable fence. I'll lock it back at 90. And I've got power on, it's connected, it's on automatic. I look down through the cursor here, and it tells me where I'm at. Then I can put it on on the mark and I can hold it there. It's a heavy machine. My other hand isn't holding it. See that? Magic. Uh, and start her up. And that's where the other domino used to be. It's just amazing. Do the other one. take her out. There you have it. That's it. Basically a domino is a non-rotating dowel for people that aren't aware. There it is. That's what's going to go into there. It's perfectly snug this direction. I can't wobble it this way, but I can move it left to right because I put it on the wobbly section in the setting to give it a bit of clearance. You can see it wasn't five, it's about three mil. All right. Next thing is we're going to do it for this one. Just there. I'll bring these forward to there and there. Like so. Pop that there. And bring the clamp up just to hold it in position so it doesn't go wobbling. There. 
I can put a domino there and a domino there. Do that straight away. It's exactly the same setting because the back is flush. Jump. Take that off. There we go. Now, a bit of glue and a clamp. I'm not going to use tape. A lot of the time people say, Dave, you've got to use blue tape. Well, in this particular situation, I'm going to just put it together. And I've got a wet rag, and that's how I've done it for years and years and years. Switch cameras again, and so be it. Now, this is one of those glue brushes that's silicon. You can use this kind of thing, or a lot of people use uh, pastry brushes that are a silicon pastry brush, or for brushing on egg white. I think it's the same kind of thing. The good thing about this is I just pull the glue off. See, so it's dried on there from yesterday. And don't panic about breaking it. It's not going to. Maybe you'll lose a bristle now and then. But I've had this brush for four years. There you go. Ready to go again. You can see it's had a couple of casualties there, but overall, pretty good. A little bit of glue. And I'm going to glue on this one. And I'm going to favour the back. It doesn't need a truckload of glue. A little bit on the sides for the dominoes to go onto. See that? That's all I've done before I use the brush. Hmm. And a little bit on the top of this, on the top of the dominoes. What a great idea with some scrap, you know, make a set of... Does anyone play dominoes? Have you, do you remember playing it as a kid? I remember playing dominoes as a kid. It was good fun. I think we need a little bit more glue than that, David. I like to try and start off with a little less rather than a little more. Because for a start, why throw glue away? It's, it's, it's not cheap. It was a lot easier than what the old guys used to have, what Arthur would have had to do. I think they had to boil it, make their own glue. Maybe that's starting to go back a few more years than him. Now, I think... I think this is in the Queen Anne style. Now, I think before then there was a style called, I think it was Henry and Mary. I'd have to research that. But if you know, put a comment in the, uh, in the chat. And, uh, or if the, you're watching the recorded show, put a comment down below in the, in the comments. All right, now that's back. So you can see the back there and the length there. And I'm going to cut it to be the right length because I don't want it to make a mess. I'll cut it the same height as this one. Oh, there we go. Might have to make another piece. <laughs> no, it's okay. No bitumen involved with that fall. Um, tape measure. Tape. One of the things that I hadn't got out. There we go, got one here. So this one is 273. So I'll dock this off on the capex at 273. I think I've got it right there. Yes, I have. So 273. Give me a sec. 
Turn on the lasers. And I'm going to cut slowly. A little bit of noise. Well, the reason I cut slowly, like I bring the saw down, brought it down very slowly. Oh, gee. Ugh. Rubber floor. Look, I look after myself. Um, it's amazing anything survives. <laughs> <laughs> Try have a go at it. Uh, I use, I, I go through very slowly because it's cedar tends to, because it's a very open grain timber. It the grain collapses. It like if you've tried to chisel cedar, it is a pain because the unless you use a super duper sharp chisel, the grain will just collapse behind it uh, as as you're cutting down below with a chisel. And you have these little tear outs of the grain release. So I cut very slowly with the capex just then. And I got a pretty reasonable cut. If I had gone fast, there would have been a lot of tear out in that. Now I need to look at this and say, right, that's the back. That's there, that's there. If I was to push that on two, there and there, I think that might do. I'm going to give it a little bit of a tap. I'm just lining up the end. Beautiful. See that? There's my joint. And it's, it's just the dominoes holding it together. You know, I look at it sometimes, I think, do I really need to put clamps on it? But I will. Great machine. <laughs> People wonder why I rave about this company's products. They just make really nice stuff. Okay, now, I think I'm only going to use the one clamp and I'm going to put it on from behind. The reason being, I want to get in and be able to clean up the squeeze out that's going to happen on this side. I know it's going to happen. Being a parallel clamp, I can lay it over flat. And also, oh, here's another thing. I don't know if you realize, with this style of clamp, if you take all the paraphernalia off the end, this is called a 300, which is a foot, 304 millimeters is a foot. So if I bring it back to there, I've actually now got about 370. You can sneak a little bit more by getting rid of those things. Don't take it past the end totally. So I've still got the, the bar exposed there. I'm going to turn it over this way so I can get to there. Bring it back and then slowly nip it up. I might even give it a little bit of an incline so it shares the load across the piece of timber. All right, I'm going to put another clamp up the top, but you can see what I mean with the squeeze out. You can see it's just starting to happen. That's not bad. Not bad at all. Um, as I said, I'll get another clamp. And then we might hook into using the, the uh, disc sander on that, on that fence. Are you enjoying this kind of thing? You know, what else would you be doing? Nothing. <laughs> Put the other clamp here. There we go. Just pulling it up a little bit tighter. I don't want to go over the top, but you can see now that extra little bit of squeeze out up the top there. And if I'd used a heap of glue, it would have been going everywhere. So you don't really need to put, you know, three gallons of glue on. I'm talking Imperial again. Three, um, 12 litres of glue, forget that. I think that's the conversion. Everyone's got different conversion or different units. Um, I don't know why. All right, just a, a damp rag. Not too wet, because I don't want to lift the grain like crazy. And I can use this part on the glue brush inside to get that rag in pretty close.
and across there, right on the point, and then just a general rub. Cool. Now that's going to do me. That'll come up well. So nice. A little bit of glue on the back I'm not concerned about. All right, I can put that to the side and it is on the right way. <laughs> it was embarrassing when I put it on, even though there was no one here. Do you catch yourself when you're doing something and you go, you idiot, why did you do that? You know better, you know better and you still did it. All right, where are we up to with this little list? Uh, We've done that dressing table. I've shown you around the table. Uh, the upright, we've just glued, we planed it. Um, we've uh, got to sand the top end grain. Oh, that was on the, on the rolled section there. Yep, so we did that. We've shown you Paul Franklin's uh, dominoes. How nice was that? I love that kind of stuff. Send stuff in. And I'll see if I can get it, put it up on the show for you. I also remember that during the week on Wednesday mornings, that's Wednesday, Australia, Eastern Standard Time. So it's Greenwich Mean Time plus 10, Wednesday. So it may actually be a Tuesday evening for a lot of you people. But for me, it's nine o'clock Wednesday morning, Australian Eastern Standard Time. We have a little chat. It's, that's all it is. It's a live session. It, the, the image won't be as clean as this. It'll be kind of... A little bit dodgy but if you need an escape from you know cabin fever or whatever you can enter comment down the side down this side on that particular show I don't know how long I'm gonna do it for maybe until you all get sick of me <laughs> maybe all right what's next <clears throat> over here to this machine and I'm going to use Dust extraction, but I'm also going to use uh, my mask. I'm going to switch her over to camera number three. That's not a bad image, is it? You can see that all right. The colors are pretty good. These are great little cameras. Just a webcam. That's all it is. And turn on the dusty. Now, I have a remote here. And I'll check that we've got air coming through here. I do. And I want to make sure that it's not coming through anywhere else. And it was. There we go. I've shut all the other blast gates off. Of course, with sanders, it's very important that you look after yourself. That's a bit of a shame, David. I've got another power supply here. Plugging her in. Yeah, very important. All right, gonna turn her on. And... This is the shape. There's a bit of a step here, so I've got to support it to stop it wanting to drop down. See how we go. Doing okay. Now it's lifting up on this side. Oh, 
What do you think? We'll do the other side. Again, I'm using my hand to counter it wanting to pull away from me. Careful. It's getting a little bit excited. I think that's pretty nice. This part here I need to do with a bobbin sander or the spindle sander. How are we doing for time? Let me have a look. I'll turn this off. I'm back to the main camera. 52. You know what? I might drag it out. Why not? Won't take long. It's the great thing about having things on wheels. This fellow here, we'll move him back. I need to make another cart for this because this sander is way too high. I'm not a fan of it being up that high. I'm going to plug this one into here. I could just plug it straight into the um, into the shop back or the, the automatic power point on that. But every now and then I wonder whether or not I'm doing the right thing because it might be a situation where it's pulling too much ampage. Take those off. The 36 millimeter hose works really well. I might sound strange when I've got this mask on, but bad luck. So if I plug that into there and into the back here, it might work. All right, that's. I think we'll be okay with that. I'll switch cameras. And we're getting very close. Where are we? Turn this one on. And turn it off. Put the other specs on. Because I'm in pretty close on this. One of the tricks is to not hold it in one spot for too long. That's coming up well. I like it. I like it a lot. Mm -hmm. That off. 
and take that off. I think that's about it. Let's have a look. That's nice. That's, that's a nice shape. Now let's have a look against the plane. Now I took all the workings out of the plane. On here, the lever adjustment, the lever and depth adjustment, there's a little cat cup there in this kit that Veritas got to me. And the adjuster has got a rare earth magnet in it. That's what holds it in. It's pretty clever. All right. Let's see. That lines up with there, lines up with there. And that's what it's going to look like. Now, I always get an itchy nose after using the sander. Even, it's, it's basically the mask over my nose. It creates an itch, it's not the dust. Now the good thing about this is I'll be able to hold on to the horn that I created on the front of the plane and also push against the fence there. So that'll be my motion as I'm pushing it along. How nice. I love it. And so I'm going to do a round over. How I got that profile was I used French curves. I, you see these lines? See the lines on the side of the plane? What I did was I transferred from there around to the back on both sides to create the top line. And then I measured down uh, 10 mil and then 15 millimeters until the profile was basically replicating what was on the top of the plane. Now you notice it's not exactly the same. And that's where the French curves came into effect. So I, rather than going up at the, at the horn there and be going all over the place, so that, that looks a little bit horrible. And you notice that I've also got the rock maples lining up with the rock maple on the, on the body of the plane here is lining up with the edge there. Next thing to do is to put a round over on here. So I'll do a six millimeter round over right the way around, I think. And then some more sanding and then a finish. And then put the rare earth magnets in, of course. All right, guys, I think that might do it. If you like what I'm doing, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. And don't forget to authorize email alerts. If you just ring the bell, that's not going to do it on its own. You've got to authorize email alerts. Um, I don't know how to do it, but I've done it for other people, for people that I subscribe to. And uh, I think that's all, that's all you need to do. I'm waffling now. <laughs> um, don't forget the midweek chat at the moment that's what, that we're doing. And I think that's about it. Yep. I'm looking around for the mouse. I'm looking around for you. Thanks to my patrons again. And remember, here we go. There's that little thing that I do. And come back to the main camera. Seriously, your support is fantastic. It's helping me out big time, especially with this downturn, with everything happening at the moment. Uh, I like to be able to keep on bringing the show to you. And one of, the one of the sad facts of life is the world needs money to rotate. Uh, I need to buy food, all that kind of stuff. So thank you very much. Uh, let me see. We will look at doing something like a meetup with patrons. I was looking at Zoom, but then I heard there was all sorts of security issues with Zoom. We might look at uh, Google Meet or something like that. Anyway, I think that's it down to there. Look after yourselves, be nice to each other, and I shall see you next time. Bye. Stay safe. <music>